And Loney, Tom Cricky back here at Princeton Stadium where it is Colgate up 14 to nothing. And Colgate forced Princeton into a timeout before the second quarter got underway. They snuck their offense out onto the field. Princeton had the return team on. Colgate is going to go for it on fourth and nine. Brown will drop back to pass. He looks down the middle and is picked off by Justin Stoll. He will turn it across the 40, 45 yard line and the Tigers come up big defensively. Chris Brown threw that right into the hands of Justin Stoll. I don't know who he was intending that pass for. You know, going into it, I was thinking, you know, this isn't such a bad call. The worst thing that can happen to Colgate is they turn the ball over <laughs> on downs uh, at their own 35. If they punt it into the end zone, Princeton gets it back on the 20. But, but I, didn't, I didn't envision an interception like that as Brown threw it right into the hands of Skull here. I mean, there's, there's no receiver anywhere near there, and Princeton forces its second uh, turnover of the season. I guess there was a, a wide receiver running a slant pattern, and Skull jumped in front of that. Dwayne Long, wide receiver, was intended on that one. Verbit looks to throw on first down, fires to the sideline. Szymanski with a great leaping catch for a first down at the 42. Well, he had to really pull the tightrope move along the sideline to come down inbounds with that pass. It's all going to come back. I think there's a flag down holding against uh, Princeton as the preliminary call. But a great play by Szymanski as he showed great body control and getting both legs down despite being outstretched to make the catch. Holding on Princeton, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, usually when, when a quarterback is in the pocket for that long, that's when you normally we'll see a flag thrown. Right, it's so hard to sustain blocks for that length of time, and uh, one of the Princeton def uh, offensive linemen called for holding there, so it results in a, in a first and long situation, again, almost like the, uh, the last possession. Yep. So the ball will be spotted back at the 37-yard line, and it'll be first and 20 for the Tigers. And what happens here is Princeton loses the, the, the element of surprise. It looks like an, a passing down, an obvious passing down, and the threat of the run is really eliminated. Middle screen for Veach, but a little too hot to handle on the pass from Verbin. Incomplete, and it's second down. Well, that pass by Verbit from only about five yards out, that looked like it had a little carry wood fastball on it coming right at you. Yeah, Verbit was getting pressured by number 67, Jeff Galately, and I think that resulted in the pass coming in a little bit faster than it wanted to be. Verbit to the sideline for Szymanski, but high and over his head, and it'll be third and long for Princeton. Matt Verbit had a good first quarter passing-wise. He was 6 of 8 for 44 yards, but the Princeton Tigers were not able to get the ground game going, a total of five yards rushing for Princeton in wow. the first quarter. And I think a majority of those completions came on that very first drive yep. when Princeton was successful. Since that time, they've been faced with long yardage situations, much like they are right now. Third down and 20. Verbit, and he will go down. He is sacked by Lukabu. Tim Lukabu. And that will force Princeton to punt it away. Herbert didn't have a whole lot of time on that last play. That's right. He didn't have a lot of time, and, and given the length of the uh, the play, they needed to get 20 yards. He needs to have time to enable his offensive receivers to get downfield. And Luckaboo coming on a blitz uh, collapsed that pocket and made a sack for even uh, less yardage or a loss of more yardage. Third sack of the year for Luckaboo. Colin McDonough to punt it away. End over end, that ball will roll, and I think that hit a Colgate player, and it did, and J.J. Artis has it, and it'll be Princeton ball. That hit one of the Colgate defenders running down the sideline. So Princeton's going to have the football as they get a huge break here early in the second quarter. You know, the referees are oh. debating it right now. Let's see what the... Uh... It looked like it hit one of the defenders running down with the, the outside man, and they're saying, nope, it did not hit him. And it'll be first down for Colgate to see if we can tell on the replay. On, on Princeton, Colgate takes over, first down. They're saying the ball was down by Princeton. And I guess they're saying that it did not hit any Colgate blocker there. It appeared as though it did because the, the ball definitely took an unusual bounce. It was a short end-over-end -end punt. 
Well, Colgate gets a break as they have the ball first and 10 at their own 37. Here comes Branch trying to get to the outside, but he is dragged down by Alan Borelli. A nice play there by the outside linebacker. Borelli from Medford, Oregon, the sophomore at 205 pounds. Really strong play by Borelli here as he chased Branch right down the sideline, showed good pursuit, and then extended and made a tackle for no gain. So, so very nice stop on first down by Borelli. While Branch is a very good physical runner, he may not have that breakaway speed right. that you see out of some tailbacks. He needs to go tackle to tackle and get ahead of steam going. He's not going to beat you around the corner. Short game there as Borelli makes another stop. Pickup of about a yard or two for Branch. And the Princeton defense seems to have settled in a little bit. It, it appears uh, this is a very young defense, and they've struggled at the outset of games, but then they make adjustments as the game progresses. Unfortunately, they're down 14 nothing before they have stabilized. Good job by Borelli, who's made a couple of big plays, and there you see Day split off, the former quarterback. He is in as the nickelback. He'll take the slot receiver on the far side. Five D-backs in the game for the Tigers. Brown to pass down the middle, and it's picked off. Sam Snyder has it. He's across midfield to the 45 and down to the 44. Second interception of the game for the Princeton Tigers and for Sam Snyder. He gets his first of the year. And that's what Princeton wanted to do, put Colgate in third and long situations. They thought that Brown... It, is erratic as a thrower and will make mistakes. And he's made mistakes on his last two throws as this ball is overthrown and intercepted by Snyder. I mean, that was well overthrown, 10 yards overthrown. And then Snyder picks up some additional yardage on the return. So here come the Tigers. They've got the ball in Colgate territory. Down by two scores. They'll give it to Brandon Benson. And really no gain. In fact, you'll lose about a yard. The explosive defense of Colgate. Sean McCune, the safety, coming up on that play. It looks like just about every time that Princeton is running a first down play, Colgate is sending eight guys to the line. They are. They, they unquestionably are. They have that kind of confidence in their defensive backs. It's an experienced secondary. And the guy who made that tackle, Sean McCune, this is his 30th start as a defender at Colgate, so he's seen everything. Second and 11 at the 45. Benson with the carry. Not much going there. Ryan Dish, the middle linebacker, shut that play down. And that was another run blitz right there. And now they've got Princeton where they want them, third and long. Princeton had run the ball successfully last week, having uh, you know two rushers who nearly rushed for 100 yards. As you mentioned, the first quarter statistics, they're putting nothing up uh, so far from a rushing standpoint. So it'll be third and 10. Give Benson a yard on that one. And Princeton will go with three wideouts. Two to the top side, and here comes Morrison in motion to the right. Herbert, the short drop, pass incomplete, intended for Clinton Wu. Trying to run a little quick slant on the far side but the pass was low and Princeton with great field position not able to advance the ball and they'll have to punt it away. Yeah, the ball was intended for Wu but Verbit was pressured, was not able to set himself and delivered the ball inaccurately low, Wu not able to make the catch. Colin McDonough has been a busy guy so far in this ball game. His fourth punt of the afternoon, good snap. And a beautiful kick, angling it towards the corner, but it'll go into the end zone. And so Colgate will get it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Great punt, 44-yard punt. But with the touchback, it's only going to be 24 yards from a net yardage standpoint. You don't often see punters these days trying to put it in that coffin corner anymore. They try and pooch it high and have the defenders run underneath. That one, though, with the wind a little bit behind McDonough's back, that's kind of... Kind of a tough one to, to pitch into the corner right there. That's true, although the wind, you know, looking at the flags, yeah. appears to be coming across the stadium. Yep. Just, Just watching the punts, it appears as though it is moving from left to right in terms of uh, supporting the, the ball. So here comes Colgate, first and 10 at the 20. The eye set this time. 
with Branch the tailback, and they will run it with Brown on the corner. His pass is caught, and a great leaping grab there by J.B. Gerald. Gerald has made a couple of very nice catches in this one, using his ability to jump and go up and get the ball. Nice pass here, as you'll see, uh, number 95, Joe Weiss does a great job of shedding blockers, but despite his pressure, Gerald is able to settle in and make, make the catch. He's now caught passes in 18 straight games for Colgate. That is his 30th catch of the year. The give to Branch right up the middle. Good gain on first down. He'll pick up about eight yards. That's the way Jamal Branch will be very effective in this ball game today, as we were talked about earlier, if he can run between the tackles and just hit it in there quickly, yep. that's where he gains his yards. Yeah, we saw him struggle to turn the corner on an earlier play, but when he runs tackle to tackle and he gets a line surge like he did here, he's very, very effective. Pickup of eight yards in the play. Branch two years ago was very effective in a game against Princeton. Came off the bench for over 100 yards and helped Colgate to a win. Yeah, he took last season off for personal reasons, but has come back as a much more mature person and a much better player. Branch to the outside, has the first down, and across to the 45-yard line on the toss sweep. So Jamal Branch starting to chew up some of those yards right now. Amazing that it's the sixth game of the season, and Branch came into play today needing only 213 yards to get to, to, to uh, 1,000 on the season. And particularly when you take into account that in the very first game of the season, he had a shoulder injury. He only had six six yards, so you can effectively take that game away. So he's achieved that in a, in a matter of five games. Branch splits out wide to the left. Brown on the roll to the right. He's got the corner if he wants to take off. Ball stripped and is stolen away by Justin Stull. What a great individual play there by the Princeton middle linebacker came out of nowhere to force pressure and then stripped it right away from Brown. That's exactly right. Brown was rolling out. It appeared as though he had some room in front of him. And then great closing speed by number 43, Justin Scull, a sophomore. Not only did he make the tackle, but he's able to strip the ball here at the end and then picked it up and nearly returned it himself. Brown was actually able to grab him by the foot. One of the things we talked about earlier is turnover margin. And uh, Princeton came in minus six. One of the lowest numbers in all of Division I AA. They're a plus two today. They've turned it over, forced three turnovers, only turned it over once. But they've yet to convert and score any points on these turnovers. They need to do so now. Here comes Morrison in motion. The give is to Veach. He'll get a couple of yards. Middle linebacker Ryan Dish was able to drag him down with an ankle tackle, but after a gain of two. And we've been calling Dish's name all, all day so far. He's the leading tackler for Colgate. He started seven games last season, then tore his anterior cruciate uh, ligament in his knee, missed the rest of the season, but he's come back and is playing very, very well. Between Dish and Lookaboo, those are the two guys that really collect a lot of the tackles for Colgate. Veach to the corner, has some room across the 35 to the 33-yard line. And it'll put Princeton in about a third and four as John Veach is getting the carries on this series. What Princeton's doing is pretty much rotating Veach and Brenson on, uh, on alternate series at this point, but that was the other linebacker, Lukaboo, who showed great closing speed there and uh, was able to tackle Veach before he was able to turn the corner. John Veach from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. Five foot 10, 185 pounds. I mentioned earlier, 99 yards and a touchdown last week in the loss to Columbia. Third and four. Morrison in the short motion. Verbit, quick drop pass, tipped at the line, and it is picked off. Antrell Tyson will get the ball right back for Colgate. That pass tipped at the line. Verbit was trying to find Szymanski on the far side. Second turnover of the game for Princeton. In free safety number 36, Ainsworth Minute came from a, from a blitzing position was right in Verbit's face and tipped this ball immediately after it was thrown and put it in a position where Tyson was able to intercept it. So alert play from Tyson. He was on the opposite side of the, uh, of the line there, but was able to find that ball and make the catch. So Princeton, after forcing its third turnover, 
quickly gives the ball back over. You're a defensive back in your days here at Princeton. You know about playing the tip drill. You, you play the tip drill, and you know one guy is automatically start yelling ball, ball, tip. You know the ball's in the air. You also know that once a ball's been tipped, that any of the receivers are fair game. You can take a guy out right away, <laughs> and uh, they responded quickly. And, and a nice, nice play by Colgate. Dead ball, false start, Colgate, five yard penalty, still first down. It almost sounds like the voice of God in some of the old-fashioned <laughs> movies. <laughs> we are being spoken to from above. <laughs> so the false start penalty moves it back to the 28-yard line, first and 15. We'll see if Branch gets it here. He does right up the middle. Good stutter step move and just bowls over Blake Perry. Gets the penalty yardage back, plus two. Pick up a seven for Branch. Well done, Mike. You have to love the way Jamal Branch runs the ball because when he takes off, watch the move he makes right here at the line, little sidestep to the left to find that hole. And that was one of the things the Princeton lineman talked about was the need to stay at home to watch him on the cutback. While he is a very big guy, he cuts back very well. And then once he gets in the open field, you saw what he did to Blake Perry there. Brown on the roll to the corner, pass is caught for Graham, and he'll have the first down at the 44. Luke Graham, the junior, six foot three, 195 pounds, with a nice catch at the sideline, and again, Brown getting out on the corner. The Colgate receivers don't have explosive speed. They're not gonna run away from you, but they're gonna catch everything that they touch, as we've seen today, and Luke Graham eighth, had 65 catches last season for over 1,100 yards. He's eighth place all time on the Colgate receiving list, moving forward with yet another catch there. First and 10, everybody in tight, and this'll be Branch. Surges ahead for about four yards. And you can see just the way they're playing, that this, you'd expect him to get better as the game progresses. You're starting to see the Princeton defenders with their arms at their sides right now. He's gonna wear these guys down as the game progresses, and the Princeton defense, despite having forced three turnovers, has been on the field quite a bit so far today. That's uh, talking with a couple of the Colgate people prior to the ball game, and one thing they said is exactly that. Branch is probably a better running back from carry number 15 on than he is from carries one through 15. And he'll run it to the left side. Nice cut back. And he'll pick up a yard or two, getting it into Princeton territory across the midfield. Branch not only a very good runner of the football, he has a good nose for the end zone. He's got 10 touchdowns, including the one he has today already. He's averaging just about 11 points a game. So when that young man can put it in the end zone, basically on an average of twice a game, that really is one of the reasons why, the big reason why Colgate is 5-0. and Third and four, big play here for the Princeton D. Brown gets to the corner, pass caught. Graham first down at the 40. Luke Graham with another catch. I believe that's his fourth of the afternoon. And Princeton came with pressure, which results in your defensive backs playing man-to-man -man coverage. So this is number 20, Tim Strickland, and man-to-man -man coverage and has a pretty big cushion right there. And Graham's easily able to make that catch and pick up, a, a pick up a first down. So once again, the Princeton defense struggling in the third down conversion department. Here comes Freescher, the tight end in motion, and now he'll set up on the right. Branch on the first down, carry up the middle, a yard, maybe two, in the middle of the Princeton defense, closing the door in a hurry. It looked like Tim Kirby was one of the men in on the stop there. You know, Princeton, their best players are defensive ends Kirby and Weiss, and it's been difficult for them to dominate from a defensive end position. Teams have been running away from them, double teaming them, and one of the things the defense has been doing, or Coach Verbert, the off defensive coordinator, has done is move those guys around, have them line up on occasion at different positions, and you can look right now, they're lined up next to each other at the top of the screen. The fullback, Guglia Amati on the carry, as he'll pick up a couple of tough yards. Just plowing that one right into the middle of the line. Yeah, and Coach Verbit feels by lining these guys up in different positions, you're more likely to get a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And in most one-on-one -on -one scenarios, these guys are going to emerge victorious. That Princeton Tigers defense been on the field for a good little bit here. As Colgate 
with a good drive going, trying to control the ball. They've used more run in this drive, I think, than any other they've had so far today. Here comes the blitz on third down. Branch will not get to the first down marker. He'll pick up a yard. It'll still be about fourth and one, maybe two. And with the wind blowing the way it is, I would imagine Colgate would probably go for it on fourth and short. Yeah, they made the same decision earlier in the game from the 34-yard line. Nothing's changed, so I, I anticipate that they will likely go for it once again. Jamal Branch, the junior, 225 pounds and six foot. And he is the real workhorse of this Colgate offense. Amazing, the last two weeks, he has had a total of 70 carries, 36 in their win against Towson two weeks ago, and 34 in the win against Cornell last week. And now Colgate wants to take a timeout. With four minutes to go here in the second quarter, and they are up two touchdowns. Kind of a big spot in this ball game for both clubs. Yeah, they decided to let the 25 second clock run down, call a timeout, and give themselves an opportunity to discuss what they want to do here and maybe give the big running back branch a little time to catch his breath and get ready for this uh, this fourth and two. Well, it really is a, it's a totally different ball game if Colgate can go in and score right before halftime. I mean, two touchdowns is one thing. 17 points or 21 points might be a total different scenario. It, it really will be a different scenario because Princeton has had trouble offensively being balanced. Colgate has effectively stopped the run and if they can put Princeton down by three touchdowns, Princeton will be forced to go to the air, and, uh, and that'll be a difficult position to be in. Fans enjoying a gorgeous Saturday afternoon here at Old Nassau. And there you see the wind, which has been a factor. That is basically blowing from the Colgate sideline to the Princeton sideline right across the field. Yeah, it's disrupted the referee's calls. Our spotting <laughs> boards are blowing around in the booth. I mean, we got to suffer as well. We're trying to nail stuff down as fast as we can. Well, here we go. Fourth and a long yard from outside the 30. That's Graham in motion. Tight formation. Everybody in tight. They'll look to pass on fourth down. And pressure down the middle. Caught by Branch. First down inside the 20. Branch kind of snuck out of the backfield and found himself open in a Great job by Brown, just waiting and waiting and finally finding an open receiver. That's exactly right, because the Princeton uh, defenders originally covered the two primary receivers here, but Brown showed great patience, and then Branch eventually snuck out of the backfield and caught it, for, uh, it was wide open and picked up the first down. So Princeton was not fooled by the play call. They covered the, they covered the primary receivers, but Branch was able to get out of the backfield in great patience by Chris Brown. So now Colgate knocking on the door at the 17-yard line. Branch outside has running room, and he is in for a touchdown. Jamal Branch on the sweep, 17 yards, and Colgate now with a 20 to nothing lead. And that was easy. He got a great seal block on the right side. The entire right side of the Princeton defensive line caved in, and he was able to turn the corner and get in for an easy touchdown. Second score of the day for Jamal Branch, who now has 11 touchdowns on the ground this year. And it'll be Lane Schwartzberg to come on and attempt the extra point. And the kick is up, and the kick is no good. He pulled it to the left. The high snap may have uh, thrown the timing off on that one. That, that's so, definitely what happened. So Princeton gets a break. They're down 20 to nothing, but here's the touchdown run by Branch. And just watch the top of your screen. A great block by the tight end, John Frazier. And then there was a pulling guard who came around as well. Also a great block by Mark Muschel, number 65. And Branch just goes in untouched. Look like the old Washington Redskins on that one. Get John Riggins around the corner. and They pulled both the guard and the tackle right there. And they got a great block by the uh, tight end as well. And it was easy. Now, once you get around the corner on a play like that, Big yards are going to happen. Well, Princeton has been in this spot before. First two games of the year, they were down by a couple of scores at halftime, came back to make it games in the third quarter. And uh, after jumping ahead 20 to nothing last week against Columbia, the 
Tigers find themselves down 20 to nothing. With three and a half minutes to go, still plenty of time to put some points on the board. See if they can get a good return. John Veach and Greg Fields are back deep. This time it might be a little easier because Colgate, their kicker, Mike Reva, is going to have to kick it a little bit into the wind. And that ball hangs up, and Veach is going to take it at the 10. 15, 20, outside 25 to the 29-yard line. So a good return by John Veach of 19 yards, and Tigers have it first and 10 with three and a half to play here in the second quarter, but they are down by 20. And I guess the question, Tom, becomes is the running game has been silenced for the most part with three and a half to play, needing some points here in the half. Do you just go to the pass game right now? They don't feel like Matt Verb is in a position yet where they can rely on him just to throw the ball. If he has to throw 40, 45 times a game, they don't think he's developed or mature enough as a passer to, uh, to experience and handle that situation. But they haven't run the ball with success. Sometimes a good running effort opens up the pass. Perhaps they might need to try the other approach and try and pass the ball effectively to set up the run. Play pass on first down. Verbit in trouble, and he gets sacked as it was Tyson coming flying through. Antrell Tyson, who had an interception a couple of moments ago, he picks up the sack, his first of the year. And uh, obviously Colgate thinking Princeton was going to pass sent the linebackers on the blitz. Yeah, here comes Ainsworth Bennett. It's, you know, what good is play action pass when you can't run the ball? No one's fooled here at all. They don't even respect the run fake to the least. And now it brings up second down and 20 with 245 left in the half. Clock is running. Five men out the pattern this time. And this is Fields in motion. And now time called as the clock was running down. Play clock was down to one when Verbit called timeout. And that'll be the second of the half for Princeton. Sometimes you see that happen after a sack is that it takes everybody a little bit of time to get back in the huddle and get the formation set for the next play. And that play clock just runs down quickly. Right. And you go from a first and 10 to a second and 20. You got to change all your personnel grouping. So that takes additional time as well. But what's happening now is with that timeout in Princeton most likely being forced to pass the ball, Colgate could likely get the ball back in decent field position yeah. with enough time left to, to make another scoring effort themselves. There you see a great look at the campus here at Princeton. Very busy in downtown Princeton last night as a lot of people have made it in for this weekend's game. And for, and for Colgate, this is a big thing. They, they don't play, they play Lehigh at home this year. That's typically the closest uh, home game for the Colgate fans that are closest away game for Colgate fans in the metropolitan area. So they bring a big crowd out, and there's a lot of them tailgating out there today. And I'll tell you what, if Colgate is going to get in the thick of things for the 1AA playoffs, they're going to have to have one heck of a road season as they play 12 games, seven of them on the road this year. They're going to have to earn it. There goes Fields in motion. Verbit, straight drop, pass caught by Szymanski. Gets it across the 25 to about the 28-yard line, so they get a lot of the lost yardage back. And now an injured Princeton player down in the defensive secondary of Colgate, back out at about the 44-yard line. Good catch there, though, by Szymanski. They ran that kind of underneath pattern. But Colgate will be content to let them run that underneath pattern the rest of the way when Princeton needs third and 20. They're content to give up seven and eight yards. They just don't want to give up a big play right now. A couple of other games going on in the uh, in the Ivies today. Bucknell and Penn are playing, and that's a 10-7 Bucknell lead early in the second quarter. Get you a couple more scores as we go throughout the day. And I just heard over the loudspeaker that Miami six, Florida State nothing. That th that that doesn't surprise me, considering they're playing in a driving rainstorm down in. Uh, down in Tallahassee. Oh, is that right? I didn't, I didn't even see that. Oh, game. yeah. It had rained all night long. Watched a little bit of the Marlins Cubs game last night. They had the tarp on the field prior to last night's Cubs win, and they had, a, they had the squeegees out to take care of the field down in Miami. And you see the injured Princeton player, Randy Bly, the tight end. He was running down the middle of the field. Good to see him walking off. 
under his own power. And hopefully he'll be back in the ball game real soon. Yeah, he appears to be okay walking off under his own power. So the Tigers in a long third down here, third and 11 at the 28. And a couple of guys in the backfield to help out block Verbit the pass. It is incomplete in and out of the hands of Clinton Wu. Would have been first down yardage at the 45, but just could not dig that one off the turf. Verbit's got a very live and strong arm, was able to stay in the pocket and avoid Luka Boo's pressure. And the pass appeared to be accurately delivered. A bit low, but that's a catch that's got to be made. Yep. Would have been a first down, so with 2.13 to play, Colgate's going to get it back. Colin McDonough back deep, his fifth punt of the afternoon. And this one is a rocket, sending Gerald back off of his hands. Loose on the ground, still loose. J.J. Artis has recovered it for Princeton. A big break there as Gerald tried to catch that one up over his head, got knocked away from him, and J.J. Artis, the freshman corner, coming up with the recovery. What a punt. Man, just, just an unbelievable punt. As you mentioned, the receiver tried to field it over his shoulder over his head. He didn't get back far enough. The ball is loose. And then a Princeton defender, number 21, Brigham Walker, comes through and dislodges it further. And Artis is able to make a great running, diving recovery of the ball. So a big chance here for Princeton with two minutes to play in the half. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Their best starting position of the day. Verbit to pass. He's got Bly open and in and out of his hands. Bly might have been able to walk into the end zone if he pulls that one down. Took his eyes off of it, running before you catch it. That's two catches in a row that uh, Princeton has failed to make when balls were accurately delivered. You know, Verbit's under duress the whole time. Colgate applying great pressure. You've got to make plays when the ball's delivered to you like that. So it's second down from the 14. Veach the carry to the left side. Nothing doing as the Colgate defense just stacks it up. A loss of a yard there for Veach. The clock running with a minute 45. Surprising that they run that, that type of play in that situation? A bit. I mean, you're running to the near side of the field, so even though you have pretty good speed to the outside, you've got a limited field to run around, and they've had no success running the ball all day. Brings up a very obvious uh, passing down here, third and 11. So they will go with five receivers in this pattern. Trips to the left now, Fields in motion right. Here comes the blitz. Vermit the pass, gets it to Fields. He's at the 10, out of bounds at the eight yard line. Great job by Greg Fields, not only making the catch, but eluding a defender. They will not have the first down, so they'll have to try and kick a field goal here, but this is a great play by Fields after the catch. What happens, Dan, is Colgate applies pressure. Verbin has to throw the ball so quickly that the receiver's not even near the first down yardage marker. So a, a great catch there and a great effort, but not even close enough to a first down. They're four yards short. Elliott Bishop for the field goal attempt from 25 yards. Kick is up and kick is through. So Princeton on the board with a field goal by Elliott Bishop from 25 yards out. And I'll tell you what, Tom, even though Princeton with great field position didn't get the touchdown, they did something very important before the half got points on the board. And that's exactly right. They maintained some momentum or regained some of the momentum that was out there. And they're doing the job. We talked about the turnovers. They were the second worst team in the country in terms of turnover ratio. Today they forced four of them. Only have three points at them, but they are points indeed. And that was important to give them some confidence going into the halftime locker room. Now there's still a little time left in the way this uh, Colgate offense has a tendency to be explosive. Princeton D is still going to have to be on their game here. A minute eight to play in the second quarter. In a couple of the early games, Princeton was not able to score in the first half. In fact, Princeton's first points 
of the first half in the first three games came last week against Columbia when they scored 20 in the first quarter. Scored 20 in the first quarter, then didn't score again until the very last drive of the game. And a very heartbreaking defeat to Columbia. Derek Javaron is going to kick it away for Princeton. J.B. Gerald and Mike Christie are back deep for Colgate. And with the wind, we'll see how Javaron will be able to see if he can put a big foot into it. It is a high angling kick towards the corner. Gerald at the five. Across the 15, not much room as good coverage by Princeton. And a flag down as the ball returned to the 21. So this will push Colgate back even further. See if it's a block in the back. And it is. It's going to be an illegal block on number 44, Matt Spack, who is actually blocking B.J. Szymanski, Princeton's top receiver, who's also in on special teams coverage. Princeton only has one timeout left. That uh, timeout they called before that uh, when Colgate, you know, looked like they were going to punt the ball and they yep. came out there off. Could make a difference here. Burn. Illegal block in the back on Colgate. The penalty is enforced from the spot of the infraction. Half the distance back. First you would down, think, Colgate. Though, you would think with the ball at the nine-yard line, here's the penalty on the return. This is Mansky number four. There he gets blocked in the back. No, no question there. He was protesting to the officials. I'm not sure what his uh, grounds for his defense were. You would think Colgate would just run it out here with the ball at their own nine-yard line. Branch has it, and he gets it out to about the 13, pick up the four yards. And I have a feeling Princeton, uh, having scored on that field goal, at least right now with only one timeout, very content to just say, okay, we'll take it to the locker room, we'll regroup at halftime and try and uh, pull this one out in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they are successful in containing the run here if they do call a timeout. At least we'll put them in a position to maybe go for a blocked punt. Yeah. Although I'm not sure they're even going to get to that point. Now with 30 seconds to go, Princeton may not have a chance. Branch the run off the side, and he'll get dragged down after a gain of about two yards. And with 15 seconds to go, that'll probably be the final play of the half. Benson's just going to let the clock run down. So the Colgate Raiders offensively with a very good attack. Chris Brown on the corner, the quarterback doing very well. Jamal Branch has two touchdowns, and we have reached halftime. It is Colgate 20 and Princeton 3 here at Princeton Stadium. Welcome back with our halftime activities in just a moment. <laughs> 